never before a lipstick so red. And Deep Magic, the new facial cleansing lotion that gives you a cleaner, clearer skin. Present Valiant Lady. I ask a lot of people a lot of questions, Mrs. Emerson. Some of them resent it, some of them don't. Mr. Frazier happens to be one that did. I can hardly blame him for that, Lieutenant Maxwell. No one likes to be accused falsely. But your son was in his way, Mrs. Emerson. Just to uh, get the record straight, how long have you and Bill Frazier been in love? You... Lieutenant, I assume you expect me to take your question seriously. The choice, Mrs. Emerson, is up to you. Then I choose to regard the last one as a joke. Your impression of my relationship with Mr. Fraser is false. Mm -hmm. He's been my friend for many years. He was my husband's closest friend. He's been like an uncle to my children. Including your son, Mickey? Including my son, Mickey. Well, Mrs. Emerson, I don't think that I'm the only person in Middlebury to have this false impression. I don't know who you talk to or what they said. But I assure you, I'm in a better position than they to know the truth. Well, sometimes a person that knows the truth is the one most anxious to conceal it. Usually, sometimes, but not always. Isn't it possible, Mrs. Emerson, that while you may feel a mellow friendship for Mr. Frazier, that his feeling for you may be somewhat less mild? If it's Mr. Frazier's feeling you want to find out about, I suggest that you question him. Oh, come now, Mrs. Emerson. He wouldn't keep a thing like that to himself, would he? And even if he tried to, wouldn't your woman's intuition tell you the truth? A woman's intuition can sometimes be as unreliable as a man's logic. But you will admit that women are more articulate about feelings, emotions, than most men. Any woman who attempts to be articulate about another person's feelings is on extremely dangerous ground. You're a pretty smart woman, Mrs. Emerson. Most of the people I question don't know that. They talk their heads off about other people. How accurately? No, not very. But that's no real problem. What interests me is what I learn about them while they're telling me about other people. You just told me, for instance, that it would be a complete waste of time to go on questioning. If I had any information to give you, I'd do so gladly. You have absolutely no idea where Bonnie Withers might have gone? Not the slightest. And you have no idea where her ex-husband Roy Withers may be? None. And you honestly believe that Bill Frazier found your son lying at the bottom of those stairs, as he said he did? I do. If I didn't, would I want to protect him from you? Would you? I would not. I want the person who did this terrible thing to make you punished, and that person is Roy Withers. The sooner he's arrested and tried, the happier I'll be. Well, that's a feeling that you can safely say I share, Mrs. Emerson. Nice day, isn't it? Lovely. Kim's things over. I just left them out in the front hall. How's Mickey today, Helen? Well, I don't know, Jane. I, I really don't. Doctor said his pulse is stronger, his blood count better, but well, I was at the hospital and I can't see any change. He still doesn't know anyone. Oh, poor dear. Is there anything Mary and I can do? Everything possible is being done. We even sent Bill Fraser downtown to put a personal ad in all the newspapers asking Bonnie to come back. I don't know whether it'll do any good, but I thought it was worth trying. What about money, Helen? Well, that isn't a problem as yet, Jane, but it's apt to become one. Well, you'll let us know, won't you? Thank you. I'm sorry I wasn't more help at entertaining Kim for you. She was bored to death at my house. Said she was homesick. Homesick for you, mostly. I decided I'll have to divide my time between Mickey and Kim so that she won't feel neglected. I don't know quite how I'll do it, but I will. 
Unfortunately, that isn't a very good substitute for a mother. I did try, but I could see myself going down in her estimation hourly. <laughs> she asked me questions I should have been Einstein to answer. <laughs> <laughs> that happens to me all the time. Helen, do you think it's possible you could have added to the confusion of the world by bringing another genius into it? Oh, dear, I hope not. I hope that she does turn out to be exceptional. And quite honestly, Jane, I think she may. Mm, so do I. Well, if she does, I... I hope she'll be able to solve some of the world's confusion, not add to it. Well, that's looking on the brighter side. <laughs> um, how's your new friend? Who? Who? Who, indeed. Your pilot friend, the captain of the airways. Oh, Chris. Gone. Oh? I probably won't see him for about a week. But then... What do you mean, if then? Well, he didn't definitely say he'd see me when he got back. He didn't even definitely say goodbye. Well, that's a pilot for you. Here today, gone today. Well, at least he was attentive while he lasted. He certainly was. He was wonderful. So, so concerned about Mickey, so wanting to be helpful. He even stayed with me at the hospital one night till, till almost two in the morning. Pilots make pretty good money, don't they, Helen? I have no idea. Why? Never mind. Does he live here in Middlebury? Well, this is one of his layovers. They fly so many hours and they rest so many. This is one of the places he rests. Regularly? I don't know. I, I, I didn't ask him. I suppose so, though. How old is he? <laughs> I don't know, Jane. I didn't ask him that either. We just didn't talk about things like that. Well, apparently you spent quite a lot of time together in the last week or so. What did you talk about? Do you really want to know? Yes, I certainly do. <laughs> well, we talked about man's quality of spirit, man's nobility, man's... Nothing about woman? No. Not even once. Sorry to disappoint you. Well, you certainly couldn't have gotten very well acquainted. Well, I, I suppose we didn't, not in the usual way. When you go through an unusual experience with someone, such as this last week has been, knowing things like uh, how old he is, where he lives, how much money he makes, doesn't seem very important compared to the other things you find out about him. But what are the other things you found out? That's exactly what I want to know. As, uh, has he ever been married? I don't know. But I do know he's kind and gentle and sensitive and has a sense of humor. That's a man. That's no man, Helen. That's a paragon. And you better be careful. Uh, hello? Helen? Yes? Who is it? Chris Kendall. Oh, hello, Chris. Well, where are you? In the hammy? <laughs> Not till tomorrow. Oh, but this is a long-distance call, isn't it? Well, no, not really. I stopped at this roadside place for a cup of coffee and saw the phone booth, and I thought I'd give you a call. How's Mickey, Helen? Well, he's some better, the doctor says. Oh, that's good. And how are you? Well, I'm all right. Uh, where did you say you were? Uh, oh, well, I don't know, really. Uh, no name on the place. <laughs> Maybe I'm lost. <laughs> are you sure you know what you're doing there? Yes. I'm having a cup of coffee, and I'm calling you. I really call to say goodbye, Helen. Oh, uh, you mean goodbye before you take off on your flight? Yeah. Yes, you, you didn't say goodbye to me at the hospital this morning. Why did you leave like that? Well, you were all tied up with Kim. I, I didn't want to break in. Well, will you be coming back from Middlebury from wherever you are tonight? Uh, yes, but it'll be kind of late. But look, will you be home tomorrow night at 7, Helen? Why? Well, Think so? Why? Well, I'll call you from Miami at 7, just to say hello. You take a very expensive way to say hello and goodbye, it seems to me, Mr. Kendall. <laughs> well, I'm a spendthrift. <laughs> well, so long, Helen. Take good care of yourself. You too, Chris. Bye. Still don't know where he was. Oh,
Miss O'Connor's dress by Seal Chapman. Be with us tomorrow when Valiant Lady will be brought to you by General Mills.